What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review. This is Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Just when we thought we was done with this season, nope, they came back with the reunion. This is of season six. Um, this is part one. I'm hoping this is only two part. I heard it was supposed to be three part. Let's hope not. But um, this is part one. Um, quick church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Okay. Also, follow me on my socials if you're not already. Let's go ahead and get into this review. I know y'all are ready for it. I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right on up into it. So of course, Nina Parker was um, the host once again. She's been a host for the last couple of years. Of course, let's give, we got to give you a rundown of the fashions and all that good stuff. Nina, the blonde is beautiful on her. That wig was not, I didn't like that wig. It didn't sit right on her forehead. The way it crowned her face, I don't feel like it, it, crowned real good and the, the, the blunt cutting and stuff. I didn't like that. She could have did something else. Maybe something else like a little bit flowy. Uh, if you're going to have it like that, have it like some wave curls or something. You know what I'm saying? But that, that wig wasn't working for her. Um, Mr. Ray. <laughs> Mr. Ray's makeup was casket fresh. I'm talking about it like you ready to put that nigga six feet under at any time. That's exactly what his makeup looked like. He had on eyeliner and all of that. His face was beat better than a lot of these bitches out here. I was like, oh, okay, Mr. Ray. Him and Jason Lee. Jason Lee had a mild beat on his face too with a little lip tint. It looked good on him though. I'm just saying, I, I thought it looked good on him. Um, let's see, who else we got up in there? Kay Michelle, she was from a remote location like she always is. But um, she had to get surgery, get the last of the silicone sucked out of butt. You know what I'm saying? So she was over, I guess she's probably in Hollywood. I don't know if they, yeah, they filmed at Tyler Perry Studios. So they was up in Atlanta. That's where they filmed at. I love the way Lyrica looked. I thought her... I thought her outfit was good. I thought the way her hair was was beautiful. That long black with the all back out. Like, bam, bitch. Just when you thought I was being a lady. <laughs> I'm a slut, too. Yeah, I like that. I thought it was cute. Um, Big Lyrica. Now, Big Lyrica, I told you about these cat suits in Antonio's show. They don't work for you. I'm all about women of a certain age. Flaunting what you got, you know what I'm saying? I hope to be one of them women, not like that, you know, wear it in a sexy way. But um, these cat suits, no, Big Mama Lyrica, no, 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 no. Mama Pam, who? Big Mama Pam, we about to get into that in a minute. Big Mama Pam had on um a middle school prom dress. I wore something like that to my sixth grade coronation, um, was a carnation homecoming thing? Y'all know what y'all do in school. I think I wore a pink one, something like that off the rip when I seen it. I was like, oh, bitch, that's a homecoming dress. All right, you know, okay. Um, her son looked great in another, <laughs> that's his apparel, that's his line. He said that um, this nigga has worn every color of the rainbow in them goddamn uh, velour track suits. I can't, I can't do it no more. You gonna have to come out with something other than some track suits. Come out with some short sets, some t-shirts, basketball shorts, some wife beaters, headbands, sweatbands, caps, aprons, scissors, something. But you're going to have to come out with something else other than them damn goddamn... <laughs> what is that for? Uh, you ugly hoes hating? Uh, the ugly hoes hating? Like, what is the... the I like... I... <laughs> We got Kendall Kendall. He's backstage giving his little ghetto commentary. If y'all do not follow Kendall Kendall on Instagram, do that because your auntie says so. He's hilarious. He does um, Best Friends and Chill. He started, I, 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 I've been following Kendall Kendall since he was doing Best Friends and Chill for like, and like he said, like the little 15 second ones. And to see him prosper, it's just like Lala, I've been following Lala for a lot, when she was broke down raggedy Lala. So to see where she is now, Savage Fenty and, and Kendall Kendall all on, in Tyler Perry Studios with a microphone in your hand entertaining the crowd. Like, good for them. Good for them. So he's backstage giving his little ghetto commentary or whatever, right? He got Apple Watch with him in the back. 
I don't understand why Apple Watch started off in the back. Maybe she got there late, and so they had to go ahead and film. So they was like, well, niggas missed the bus. We're going to have to go ahead and take off, and we're going to send the struggle bus back for you since she was late for the trip. That's what I'm figuring what it was. I don't know, because it was just very odd that she was back there in the back by herself. But, baby, she looked like a street, uh, stripper street fighter. She like she was ready to um <laughs> take your money and karate kick your ass in the same goddamn breath. You got her messed up. She can throw that ass or throw them nunchucks. Y'all got her ass messed up is what she looked for. Huh. Give me money, daddy. That's exactly what she looked like. It was, she came in her best stripper wear. That's what it was. It was a stripper outfit. Cute, but it was a stripper outfit. All the same. And me and all y'all seen it with the little shimmy shees and the shimmy yards. And she had the little genie in a bottle thing like this going on. It was cute. It was cute as hell. I give her that. It was cute as hell. But it was stripper wear. All the same. She looked good. She looked blessed. Shout out to you, Kendall Kendall. <laughs> so, we start off with A1 and Lyrica and they say more bullshit. Y'all, A1 say he hurt too. Don't nobody understand what he going through and the backlash that he caught from the whole cheaterization thing. And don't nobody bring up nothing that Lyrica does because she just as guilty and this, that, and the other. He just going on and on about, you know, what, what he going through. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, nigga, any goddamn ways. So I'm a little bit confused. Help me figure this out. So apparently... The A1 and Summer Bunny incident happened before they renewed their vows. So, nobody has said, confirmed, yes or no, whether he has done any cheaterization since they have renewed their vows. So, if this Summer Bunny shit happened before y'all renewed your vows, which means you had your baby and all of that, what is we talking about it now for? I don't, I don't get that. Y'all drug this out so this could be your storyline for the show. For real? I, you, I mean, you. <sighs> so Nina asked, what is the nature of their relationship right now? Are they together? Are they separated? Are they getting a divorce? A divorce? Like, what's going on? He gonna bust out and say, he don't even know where she live at. And she's like, you damn right she don't know where I live. This is when he starts to bring up who she supposedly was talking to and this, that, and the other. He like, don't nobody bring up what you do and, and I'm not the only one that's innocent and, and you've done this and she's steady on this. I did what I did after you did what you did. This was, this was in response to what you did, what you did. So they steady once again going back and forth with this. Baby, here come big mother fam. Yeah, don't nobody know my son go through. My son go through a lot. Y'all steady say what lyrical do. Don't nobody say what my son do. A1 said he's sick and tired of being questioned every time he leave out the house to go to work. This one Lyrica gonna say <laughs> she admires Princess and Ray J's relationship because Ray J has done a good job of making Princess feel comfortable, making Prinky feel comfortable whenever he goes out to work. Baby, when she said Ray J and Princess thing, they both looked at her like, bitch, huh? Princess look like, like, bitch, don't you? Uh, what, uh huh? Ray J looking like, I don't want nothing to do with that shit. The baby, the look that they gave, <laughs> I could have passed out right there because it was all bit of, bitch, don't put me in y'all shit. We got enough bullshit over here. See, our shit start getting heated. Big Lyrica gonna bring up something about A1 snatching the phone out of Lyrica's hand. That's when you got Mama Pan over here on the side. I thought we said we was gonna stay out of it. That ain't got nothing to do with true Lyrica to stay out of it. He like, look here. I, at one point, he got mad for real. He's like, we shut the fuck up. I'm trying to talk to my wife. I was like, whoa, pump your brakes. This fool, A1, gonna get up and start comparing himself to R. Kelly. Now, when he first said he felt like R. Kelly, I was like, my nigga, where you going with this? I don't... I don't know if that's a good representation. Then he starts mimicking the, um, what was it? The, what's her name? Robin Crawford? I think that's what, no, no, no. Gail, Gail King. That's who it was. Gail King started mimicking her interview with R. Kelly when he was like, me, y'all trying to kill me. No, nah, nigga. No, nigga. That was, it was a flat joke. It fell very flat. They had to, Fake put in people laughing because if it was a dumbass goddamn joke, I was like, nigga, you could have kept that shit. 
Next thing you know, baby, Big Mama Lyric G, uh, she gets up and she starts yelling. That's when Mama Baby Security had to come. That's when Big Mama Pam get up. No, fuck it. Y'all jealous of my son. Y'all jealous of me. We were like, whoa. I, I was, huh? What? Ma'am, excuse me? No, fuck this. Y'all jealous of my son. Get off me. That Demi, get fuck off me. They take her ass backstage, and when she walking backstage, Kendall Kendall's like, oh, shit, she coming back here with me. I'm finna have to calm this shit down. <laughs> she get back there and said, no, fuck all this pretty shit. I'm ready to throw down. Fuck this shit. She was mad as hell. Kendall Kendall's like, look here. Okay, calm down. We gonna try to talk this thing out. Man, she couldn't even take that shit. She looked like a linebacker at the end of that goddamn interview. She came out that bitch ready to take a bitch down. So they had to take her ass on back to the back of the goddamn stage. That's when Lyrica G come over. She sit down next to Kendall Kendall. Cha! Lyrica G. She was trying to give up these fake ass tears, but she trying to tell Kendall Kendall. She was like, no, I see what she's done to my daughter, and he has hurt my daughter, and you, you, she don't know what he's done. Girl, it was just fake as hell. Kendall Kendall was like, he wants to laugh at that shit. I seen that shit. I seen that shit. Next up, y'all, we got Ray J and Prinky. They talking about their relationship. The new baby that's on the way, of course, we know that they are having a boy. Ray J said they hit an all-time low in their relationship. They had to break up and be apart for a little while so they can know what they miss and bring it back together. And that makes them stronger than ever. And they ain't never going to break up. Mind you, this was filmed a couple of months ago because as we know right now, present day, that's a damn lie. They are not together as of right now. And she been all over social media saying she want a divorce. So, ain't no more talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Just moving off of that. Um, child, they talk about the whole Bugatti thing. Come to find out the dog napper was actually the guy that claimed the neighbor had a dog that was in his backyard. And he'll hop the fence to get the damn dog. Yeah. Turns out the dude that turned that in, he was the actual dog napper. What happened to the dude? I don't know. But... Bugatti had a whole damn episode of his own. Apple Watch talk about um her wilding out and y'all already know Apple Watch is drunk. She's she's a professed drunk, you know. She said her damn self. And the meeting that she had with old dude with her and Yo Yo, come to find out, um, Yo Yo didn't even know that the dude was finna pass up on Apple Watch because he was like, Well, damn, well, Yo Yo said he could have told me this beforehand before I even got there. Then Apple Watch say after he gonna pass up on her doing that, he gonna ask her to host a stripper fest. Like, that's, that's messed up. She not good enough to be on your commercials and do this and the other, but she want the girl to host a stripper fest? But how much they paying, though? Nina asked if she got a drinking problem. She said, no, nah, I ain't got a drinking problem. I probably go out about probably like twice a week and drink. And Nina was like, well, some people would say that's a drinking problem. She's like, no, no, it's not. You got Taco Tuesdays. You got Friday night. You got reggae night. <laughs> you got stripper fest night. <laughs> you got... <laughs> All night fight, you know. <laughs> Let me stop. I'm making fun. But she even said if she had something more productive to do, then maybe she wouldn't be out drinking all the goddamn time. And that's like the old folks say, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Bitch ain't got nothing to do, but she sure know where well, she can get some irking jerk. You know what I'm saying? That's going to take her back and let her do what she got to do. Now, they ask her about the whole summer bunny situation, this, that, and the other. Now, she say... um, She only worried about her pussy. She asked her, her pussy, you all right? Yeah, I'm right. Whatever that is, she do with that. I don't know what the clicking is. Somebody, if you know what the clicking is, drop it down in the comments below and let me know. But like she said, when people say she's doing something, they don't understand what she said. Now, bitch, I'm talking about something you can't understand. Well, bitch, do you understand what you're saying? I'm just saying. They asked um, her if she felt some kind of way that Mickey Monday and uh, Booby didn't like step in to try to stop the situation that happened on the bus with Britney B and Paris and Zells and her all getting into it. And, you know, Apple makes a valid point because I'm the same. I feel like men should argue with men and women should argue with women. I'm not finna sit and go back and forth with no man. Just so I was hoping no man would sit and try to go back and forth with me. That's very bitch-like of you. I'm just saying, that's just my my thinking that's my raising and all that men argue with men women argue with women i ain't got no problem with that now mickey did say he didn't jump in because britney was just as much in the wrong as the other of them was and plus he said britney is his friend so he wasn't finna get in the middle and stop nothing about it so hey i ain't mad at him for that shit shit it is what it is um they asked tiara marie about her situation she said she she um 
what a uh, life or death situation for her was when you know she was driving down the road on the wrong side on three wheels lit in the motherfucking shit that used to be me at 22 years old straight from the club me and my homegirl keisha bitch out me and keisha me and trina bitch out like a light drunk driving home don't ever do that god was on my side and he showed me a lot and i grew out of that thing Jesus. But um, Tierra Marie said after that, she realized it was life or death for her and she wants to live. So it is what it is. So y'all, next up we got uh, Fizzle Pop and J-Bug and April and they whole little situation, right? So Fizzle Pop claims he's been trying to reach out to Omarion, but he ain't got no word back or heard nothing about no situation or nothing. He ain't came to me. So, you know what I'm saying? I guess it is what it is. Every time he say that, he looking down. There's guilt in your ass. I'm just goddamn saying. So, um, Nina says to him, like, well, how do you feel, you know, knowing that y'all were friends, that y'all were best friends, this, that, and the other, y'all were like brothers. Now, that's when he was like, no, we was the best friends. That man over there talking about Jay Boog, he was my best friend. Now, Jay Boog says that he talked to Omarion not too long ago, and Omarion did express some things to him that were bothering him, that were on his mind. And so, yes, he does feel some type of way about the whole situation with Fizz and with April. And like Jay brought, um, Jay Boog brought up, Ain't your name, Fizz. Ain't your name and her court paperwork? And he's like, yeah, okay. Well, he obviously feels some type of way about it. Like, stop acting like you don't. Just, <laughs> that's why people get mad at y'all. Because you steady lying about it like it's nothing. But y'all been fucking this whole damn time. That's what's making y'all look dumb. And Omarion look like the goddamn saint out of this. Even if he's not a fucking saint. The fact that he is keeping his mouth closed and he's not flaunting all his business out there like y'all are. That's the whole difference. Just saying. Let me get up off my soapbox. But um, Paris has a, a, a valid point, though, when she says to April, like, L.A. is full of light-skinned niggas with good hair. And of all the light-skinned niggas with good hair that you could have got with in L.A., you choose to get with this man's bandmate, his brother, his best friend. Like, why would you do some shit like that? I was with Paris when she said that. This when April gets to this whole, why are you so pressed? Like, why does it bother you so much? But it bothers people because you lie about it you try to play on people's intelligence that's what pisses people off you know what i'm saying so um they get to throwing insults at each other back and forth whoop de whoop and calling each other big well april called paris a bitch first of course paris throwing bitch right back at her baby zell says the funniest shit he tell her ass to shut up he says shut up for i beat fizz ass fizz ass looking like <laughs> They asked Jay Boog, how does he feel about them not being able to go on the European tour because of the whole situation with Fizz and April. Now, he does admit he wished that they would have moved differently because of the way that they moved. That messed up on him getting the bag as well. Now, little Fizzle Pup, try, pup uh, little Fizzle Pup, little Fizzle Pop, pop, pop <laughs> like got Apple Watch, little Fizzle that's who the hell he is. But, um, like, he, he tries to play it off like, you know, I'm good. I, I, I don't need that. I'm good. And that's when Jay Boog is like, nigga, please, you know good and goddamn well you want to go on that tour. That was Mills that we missed out on. But you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, um, they ask Monice how does she feel about the whole situation. That's when Monice is like, I don't care. My whole thing is I don't care. When it involves my son, that's when I care. And April and Fizz on the side, yeah, you care. Mm-hmm, you really do care. Honestly, I don't think she gives a fuck. I don't think she cares at all who the hell you sticking your fizzle pop in. But like she says, when you got my child lying to me, that's when I got a problem with you and that bitch that you with. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm cussing a lot. I'm trying not to cuss so much because I wanted to get as much money as I can monetize. But she can't help but cuss on this ratchet ass shit from goddamn loving hip hop. It is what the fuck it is. So I would be just like Moniece. When it involves my son, yes, I, I, I got a problem with that. Now, and then he's like, um, you don't even come to his basketball games. If you care so much, you come to his basketball games. Monisa's whole thing is, look here, I done been to jail before for cracking a bitch, stirring and fracturing the eye and popping an eyeball out of socket and slicing the bitch up with razor blades and lemon juice. I done been to jail for that. I'm not trying to goddamn go back. I feel you, Monice. I'm the same way. I know my, I know when my crazy is at a crazy level. And I know when a backup 
Whoa, whoa, retreat, not even go there. She not worried about y'all. She worried about the bullshit that comes attached with y'all. And she worried about her own mental health, how she can fucking snap. If you was really paying attention to her little fizzle, you would know it's that. Zell's asked Jay Boog, because Nina asked Jay Boog, well, how would you feel, you know, how do you feel about this whole situation, about that relationship? Jay Boog is like, man, I don't speak on nothing. I don't feel nothing about nothing. Zell's like, okay, so if you fuck with your baby mama, you'll be okay with it. Jay Boog said, hell no, nah, I'll beat his ass. That's when everybody said that. Once again, feels a pop like, <laughs> Jay Boog says his whole thing is he felt like it's messed up that you fucked with his brother before which you before you were going fuck with him basically you came and you messed with fizz before you even said anything to omarion about y'all even having a relationship that's just on g code that's just out of respect that's when april gets pissed off and she try to bring up some shit on jay bug she like look here i'm not the only one that's you know everybody has had relationships with somebody in a band and that's when the fizzle pop try to say it happens in bands all the time no the hell it got damn well yeah it does but at least you know what i'm saying it's different with y'all god damn it because we talking about y'all we ain't talking about other groups that's the fucking difference but anyways april is like i'm not the only one here that's been accused of sleeping with band members families and this that and the other that's what she's referring to the whole rumor about jay bug messing around with omarion mama and of course that's when the episode ends from there before it does jay bug like hold on you want me to uh shoot my shop so your clip will be empty bitch i'm all real over here you can say what the fuck you gotta say i was like oh jay bug oh spill the tea jay bug that's what we waiting on that's what i've been waiting on but y'all the episode ended from there it was a okay review the real drama and the real good shit we finna get into is gonna be on part two hopefully we get into some real answers from the whole jay bug or marianne and in my situation i don't know we'll see but if it's anything that i miss y'all already know drop it down below and let me know please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and auntie mo we'll see y'all in the next video peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i holla